The patrons have spoken. We recently did a Patreon poll in which meta video to do next, and the results were overwhelmingly for Hunting Horn. For reals this time, guys. Thanks for being good sports about the April Fool's video. Despite its reputation as a support weapon, the Hunting Horn is capable of outputting some impressive deeps when used in skilled hands. And with each different weapon using different song lists which lead to different combos and therefore different playstyles, there's quite a level of complexity to mastering the dudes. But how do you maximize the damage on your Hunting Horn? Well, I'm Jinjinx. And I'm Tuna. And we're... The Monster Hunter, Hunter Math Guys. Guys. And this is Monster Hunter Meta Hunting Horn Builds. I do want to apologize about the delay on getting this video out. The day after we put out that April Fool's video, I contracted a respiratory infection that has kept me out of commission these past five days. I'm still fighting it off, but I am well enough to get this video out for y'all. Thank you for your patience. Today is all about the recital buffer combo and why it determines your standard attack combo with the hunting horn, why attack up large is pretty much mandatory on every hunting horn, why you should be a war bard and not a corner duder, and the meta damage builds for Hunting Horn, including one from the dupe master supreme himself, Grifted. I want to start off with a quick disclaimer. All the builds, analysis, breakdowns, and everything we do on the channel are not meant to tell you how to play. Unless you are a speedrunner or care about max deeps, these are not the only way to play and we are not suggesting that. The purpose of what we do is to educate and inform, is to give you the factual information on the relative strengths of different builds and playstyles so that you can make informed decisions. Play how you like and enjoy yourself, it is a video game after all. All the sets in this video will feature our standard attack buffs along with the self-improvement song damage buff and the highest level of attack up song the horn has. Realistically, both of these songs should always be active when you're attacking a monster. If they aren't, you should be reapplying them. So what is a recital buffer combo? Simply put, this is the song on your list that builds up recitals the fastest. Recitals, and especially encores, are your highest damage moves, so you should always be using them when the opportunity presents itself. Because you want to have as many recitals built up as possible at any given time, this buffer combo is what you want to spend the majority of the hunt using. What the effect of the song is, isn't really that important. What is important is how quickly you can stack up to three recitals. We'll cover the individual buffer combos for each build when we get to them. But why is the attack up song mandatory for Hunting Horn? The reality is, the Hunting Horn's motion value per second is simply lower than most other weapons. This is an intentional balancing mechanic for the fact that it has songs that buff yourself and your teammates. So by using attack up, you're counteracting that fact with A, your teammates dealing more damage due to the song buffs, and B, you yourself dealing more damage. The most important buffs for this are self-improvement and attack up. Every Haunting Horn gets self-improvement with a juicy 15% increase to total true roar. Never fight without it. The attack up song is only on certain Hunting Horns. Attack up small gives you 10% more base roar, attack up large gives you 15% more base roar, and attack up extra large gives you 20% more base roar. Even though it only applies to base roar, it applies for you and your teammates. Very nice, Sue. For obvious reasons, this song is basically considered mandatory on a hunting horn. If your hunting horn can't run it, you won't be dealing max deeps. And while it's true that some horns run affinity up songs or elemental attack up songs instead of attack up, neither of these are very good. It's simply too easy to stack affinity on sets, so there's only niche situations where that's useful. And elemental attack up songs don't increase the cap. So if your weapon capped at 350 thunder attack and your build already had 350 thunder, you would get nothing from the song. Realistically, you or any of your teammates running elemental weapons would have already maxed out your respective elemental attack on your set. Even if you didn't, a 20% base raw increase will lead to more damage output, even on bow. Finally, let's talk about being a war bard that dudes the song of your people, not a cowardly corner dudeser. First off, yes, Hunting Horn does have lower motion value per second than other weapons and therefore deals less damage but this does not mean its damage output is worthless. Let's briefly compare two of the TA wiki records for the rank 8 Hellfire Stronghold Teostra quest. The currently posted ward record for Greatsword is 2 minutes, 4 seconds, and 91 milliseconds. The currently posted Hunting Horn ward record is 2 minutes, 41 seconds, and 30 seconds. This puts Hunting Horn at a 29% slower kill time for Teostra, and Greatsword is pretty top tier in terms of weapon TA clear times. Admittedly, no, this isn't a great way to compare weapons damage output. 
Every weapon has different matchups they are strong and weak against, and unfortunately, Hunting Horn has quite a lot they're weak against. In some matchups, the Hunting Horn will be 40% slower, and in some, 15. The point we're trying to illustrate is, the damage isn't that much worse than other more meta damage options. It is lower to compensate for song buff mechanics, but dealing 80% of the damage of your GS buddy is a hell of a lot better than dealing zero. So go smash some monster skulls while duding the song of your people. Mama said never be a corner duder. Alright, onto the builds. First up we have a treat for you guys, a build from the master duter himself, Grifted. Hey guys, thanks for having me. I'll be talking about one of the most underrated builds in the game, a crit status sticks build. Crit status amplifies the status ailment buildup of your weapon whenever you land a critical hit. The status ailment on the Empress Roar sticks is blast. Since crit status requires three pieces of Zora Magdaros armor, that rules out Behemoth Master's Touch for us. Luckily, the Empress Roar sticks comes with natural white and Razor Sharp built in. Razor Sharp halves your sharpness loss. These two things take care of our sharpness management. Hunting Horn sets are built like every other Blade Master set, focusing on obtaining 100% crit. After that, we squeeze in attack and peak performance to help out the DPS. Horn Maestro is a great quality of life skill and is easily worked into most sets as a level one decoration. But we leave out Horn Maestro on the Empress Roar sticks because of the unique song set. Styx has attack up small, and when encored, it gets attack up large. The time you maintain attack up large without Horn Maestro is comparable to the time you maintain attack up extra large on Deep Vero with Horn Maestro. Too long didn't read, Horn Maestro isn't needed on Styx. Built into the set is a very synergetic Blast Attack 2, and we gem in Blast Attack 3. Again, abusing the crit status and focusing on getting as many blast procs as possible. The set also comes with Trimmer Rest 2, which is a nice utility skill. Depending on your decoration restrictions, you can swap the charm and some decorations around to fit your individual needs. This is a relatively new set for speedrunners and hasn't seen much action yet. I use the set in my TA wiki speedrun Rush of Blood, which sees you fighting two Odogarons. I could see this set being used on any monster with a weakness to blast, or monsters with poor hitboxes for blunt weapons. Because of the built-in trimmer res, this set is also appealing for monsters like Bon and Uragon. The Empress Roar Sticks crit status build is utilitarian and easy to use. It's effective and extremely fun. One of my absolute favorite sets. Thank you guys for having me, and keep playing that sweet chin music, boys. Appreciate it, Grifted. If you'd like to learn more about the mastering of the dudes, Grifted is your man. He has videos covering everything you could possibly ever need to know about the hunting horn and how to optimally dude. Seriously, he covers mechanics we didn't even know existed. Link to his channel will be in the description, definitely go show him some love. Alright, time to cover the other meta builds. We will be referencing things like double nodes, double swing flourishes, super pounds, etc. in the video. This is a build guide, not a hunting horn mechanics guide, so we won't be explaining the specifics on these things. If you'd like to learn more about those, be sure to check out Grifted's Hunting Horn Masterclass series. Let's cover the most beginner friendly one first, the Bone Hunting Horn. With full buffs, this build hits 673.68 EFR. Other than the Sticks build, which does focus on blast damage instead, this build does have the lowest EFR out of every one we're going to have on this list, so why run it? The Bone Hunting Horn has the advantage of having the highest damage buffer combo in the game. Scout fly up for three double notes. The song effects itself are completely insignificant. The fact that you can queue up three recitals by spamming Super Pound five times in a row is significant. Super Pound is your strongest non-encore move. With the Bone Hunting Horn, other than keeping your attack up extra large maintain, you can basically just spam Super Pound until you have a recital opening and repeat until the thing is dead. It has arguably the simplest playstyle in the game for Hunting Horn and is pretty damn effective at it. And Earplugs S only hits Earplugs 3 at max, but it's still pretty handy. Small monster roars like Odogarons can be completely negated, while larger monster roars have reduced stun time. And you can change the Hornmeister deco for another attack deco if you're fine with having to re-up your songs during the hunt. Next up is the Empress Roar Blaze Hunting Horn. At 709.63 EFR with some blast damage as well, this hunting horn is quite a bit higher EFR than the Bone Hunting Horn. However, it does not get to use Super Pound Spam as its buffer combo. Instead, it gets the huge benefit of Melody Effect Extended as its buffer combo which extends the duration of every currently active song. This means that as long as you play this song every so often, you never have to re-up your other songs. This also works for your teammate songs as well as your Palico's Choral Orchestra songs, which is pretty phenomenal. 
It makes the combo loop for this hunting horn super simple. You basically just spam double swing with a double note flourish to build up songs. This allows you to never need Horn Maestro as all your songs have effectively infinite uptime. Knockback negation is nice to have too, basically a free flinch free for your whole team. This build is both peak and agitator reliant though, so that's something to keep in mind. But the built-in blast is some nice bonus damage. Next up is the KT Sleep. At 713.33 EFR, this is the highest EFR set for Hunting Horn. However, like all the other builds, it is also peak reliant, and because these sticks and blaze builds have blasts built in, they may outdamage this build. Similar to the blaze, this Hunting Horn uses a double swing into double note flourish as its buffer combo. However, for the blaze, this song is health recovery small. This synergizes really nicely with the peak performance in the build while also keeping your teammates topped off. More peak performance means more max deeps. Either this or the Blaze build are excellent for use against anything that doesn't have a damage aura, generalist builds. Both are very close to each other in terms of damage output, and mostly comes down to whether you prefer health recovery songs or never having to re-up your attack up extra large songs. Finally, we have the Joe Hunting Horn, the Deep Vero. By far the sexiest hunting horn in the game in my opinion. Dudes me daddy. At 707.78 EFR, this horn hits pretty hard. Not as hard as the previous two builds, but it does have dragon damage to boot. And while more max might reliant, it's a hunting horn, so there's relatively low commitment in that area. The primary benefit of this hunting horn is that it has zero peak performance. So against monsters that you can't keep peak performance active, this build will serve you best. It's also your highest damage option against dragon weak monsters. The main issue with the Joe Hunting Horn is that it doesn't have a very efficient buffer combo. The best option is the Wind Pressure Negated Song, which acquires two double notes and a red note after. After the first cycle of the song, you can do a double note flourish off the red note to remove one move out of the combo, but at minimum, you need to do three moves for the first song and two at the minimum afterwards. This makes it overall fairly slow at generating recitals compared to other options. It has the worst song list from an efficiency perspective. However, it does have a nice song list from the effects perspective. Defense up extra large, wind pressure negated, both very useful. Health boost is less useful because it doesn't raise the cap. So unless your teammates didn't bother eating or max potioning, it has zero effect. Unfortunately, the Deep Vero is so affinity hungry that you can't run Horn Maestro on this set without losing 100% affinity. Up to you whether that's worth it. And that about does it guys, this sick boy is thankful for your patience with us in getting this video out. Huge thank you to Grifted, again, check him out, he is the master when it comes to hunting horn. And thank you for watching. Let us know which hunting horn is your favorite in the comments, meta or not. If you're looking for some more tips and tricks on duding, you can check us out on the discord, the Mathlos Nest. You can follow us on Twitter where we post updates on videos and other things that interest us. And you can check me out on Twitter where I stream Monster Hunter and other content almost every day. Shout out to Honey at HoneyHunters.com for providing the tools we use to make sets. And a huge thank you to our patrons, Ray, Exponage, Ven, Heika, Checklum, Yoshi Cho, John Cowan, Ken Alvarez, Robin, Bram, Lightweight, Skylar Yang, Lupin, Mongus, Lord Sinane, Jamie, and everyone else who's been supporting us on Patreon. Again, we have Patreon-only polls for the meta weapons we cover next, so if you're interested in being a part of that, check it out. We really appreciate the support. We have a new poll set for our next meta video, so that should be up soon. If you want to see that when it goes live, you know what to do. Until next time, happy hunting hunters, and keep playing that sweet chin music, boys. Bye! Bye.